to Friday on a Saturday. <laughs> Doing this thing every single day is not exhausting, but it's like thinking about what I have to say that it's really be like, I don't know what to say. But anywho, I guess I have to plan more if I'm really going to be on this every single day talking to y'all. I have to plan it out more because I can't run out of stuff to talk about. Okay, so it's Saturday and if you know Frequent to Friday, I, well, I hope y'all like my hair. I got my hair done yesterday. In all honesty, that's pretty much the reason why. I didn't come on here for free coins on Friday, but that's not even an excuse. So, um, the free coins on Friday, meal, music, and meditation. The meal that I had today, I had a big breakfast. I had some waffles with some pine waffle syrup, pancake syrup, and then I had some scrambled eggs along with some mashed sweet potatoes and a hot dog my daughter had the same thing too and then she had orange juice and I had a smoothie made of chocolate cocoa powder um, frozen banana oat milk and peanut butter in Thailand that smoothie is called a cocoa boom boom and it's not it's not oat milk, but they use like regular milk. But those ingredients, it's called Coco Boom Boom in Thailand because that's when I first ate that that um smoothie was in Thailand when I was over there, and it's delicious. So that was my meal for today so far, and. Yesterday, what I had, I had Burger King yesterday. And listen, I was on that line for so long. Sorry to the people who were Burger King, but I was on that line long. But it looked like they have new people there now. So that's probably why the new people trying to get used to the system there. But um, I had, they gave me fries instead of onion rings. And so I had to wait to get my onion rings. And then they didn't have no cheese on my sandwich. I wanted cheese on my sandwich. I got a chicken sandwich all the way, no ketchup, with cheese. I didn't get no cheese. But I said, you know what? I didn't realize I didn't have the cheese on it until I got home and I opened up my sandwich and I was eating it. So, I couldn't, you know, I could have gone back and probably gotten a new one. Got a new one, but I wasn't into that. So, I just ate that last night with my onion rings and my orange juice. That's what I had last night for my meal. So, Meditation today. Today is meditation. We're going to start doing Christmas stuff because I'm not waiting for December because, you know, once December reached Christmas over, New Year already here. So, I'm going to start doing Christmas now. We could talk about grace. So, y'all, my first song on my Christmas album is going to be a song about grace. Once I put that out, it's going to be on YouTube, of course, because my mixtape was on only on YouTube, but hopefully I could get this recorded in the studio. That's the plan. Um, hopefully by December 1st, it'll be ready. Like my mixtape was done November 1st, December 1st. I'm looking to have at least my one real recording Christmas song done, which is going to be about grace. And so grace, it's, I don't know how to explain it. But, you know, like when you are, okay, let's talk about Joseph. Joseph in the Bible, not Joseph, the husband of Mary, the stepfather of Jesus. Not Joseph. Not that Joseph, but Joseph the dreamer. Do you remember that Joseph was his father's favorite child? And he got all these amazing things. In particular, we knew about the coat of many colors that he got from his dad. Simply because he was his dad's favorite child because he, his dad had him in his old, at his old age. Okay? And you, children mean different. 
um, I'm sorry, parents view children differently in their old age because I was in my, I was 30 when I had my daughter and trust me, I would not have appreciated, appreciated my daughter the way that I appreciated her if I had her earlier. Okay, so I don't know how old Jacob was, but I was an older, I wasn't in my teens or my 20s when I had my daughter. So I was an older mother. Um, I wasn't old, but mentally and emotionally where I was at when I had my daughter and allowed me to really appreciate that there was life in my home outside of me and my husband at the time when we were living together. So Joseph was the favorite son. He was, he had, Jacob had Joseph when he was an older man and he treated Joseph so well. Like, Joseph was his only child. I could go as far as to say that. I don't really know. I wasn't there. But let's say that to the other sons, because he they were not the favorite, they felt like Joseph was their dad's only child because Joseph got so much. Joseph was treated so well. He was favored. He was... He was his father's pride and joy. The apple of his eye. Listen... I say this to say, grace allows us to be Joseph to Father God. Grace allows us to be in a position with God where he will clothe us with a coat of many colors because of grace. Grace allows us to be favored by God. Grace, no, let me let me say that differently. Grace allows us to receive the favor of God. What is grace? I thought grace was a what? Just like in in just like um just like back in the day, I thought that truth was a what. It's something you say, it's something you speak. No, grace and truth is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is grace. Jesus Christ is truth. And when you read about Paul talking about, if you have no love, you're a tinkling symbol. If you have no love, it's like when you're talking, it's just noise. When you when you have no love, what you do is nothing. You are nothing. Even if you tell truth and there is no love, it's just noise. And I used to be the type of person who just true, 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 true. I want the truth. I want the truth. But really and truly. There is no truth outside of Jesus Christ. It's just noise. It's just noise. All of it is just noise. There is no truth outside of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is truth. There is no joy outside. Um, there is no grace outside of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is grace. And grace came to us. When Jesus Christ was born. Truth came to us when Jesus Christ was born. And love sent Jesus. So do you understand why you have nothing without love? You, you, have, you have nothing without love. Because the reason we have grace, the reason we have the gift of faith, the reason we have the gift of salvation is because God so loved the world that he gave us grace, that he gave us truth in Jesus Christ. God so loved us that he even gave every single human being enough faith to believe on his name, to receive the grace and truth. That is Jesus Christ. To receive grace and truth in Jesus Christ. So that we can be reconciled to him. That's love. 
And for so many, 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 many years, I used to think that love was just... I used to think that love was just what you do. And I remember listening to someone preach that love is a feeling. And I was like, hmm. But love is patient and love is kind. You know? Love is all of those things. But you 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 don't see patience. Patience is intangible. You don't see kindness unless someone shows it to you. But you feel it's internal first. It's internal. Love is love is spiritual. Love isn't something that you can like the wind. Love is like the wind. You can feel it on your skin. You can't really see it with your eyes, but in the actions, in the person's actions, it becomes tangible. And like for a long time, I really didn't agree with that statement that love was a feeling. Because I thought that, you know, it's like faith. Faith without actions is dead, but faith comes before the actions. Love comes before the, the patience and the kindness and the giving. Because God gave because he loved. And I only just realized this, that love in itself is something separate from the action of God giving his son. You know? And so, by grace, we are saved through faith but we would not have grace and truth what we and these are things that we need for salvation we would not have grace and truth we would not have faith we would not have life if it wasn't for god loving us not just those who believe but to god loves everyone it is unconditional and Jesus Christ, when he came, he was the, he first, him coming was proof of God's love for us. Even before we accepted Christ, even before he died and we were able to accept him as our savior, you know? And so my Christmas album is going to be to be honest with you, my Christmas album is becoming something I didn't expect for it to come because originally it was about having Christmas with my daughter, but it's becoming something completely different. I may have to change the title of it, um, but at the end of the day, I think it's going to stay the same, but it's all going to come together and it's going to work out for the good of the entire album because the title... Oh my goodness, I can't, I'm so excited about this album because it's finally something that I, I want to say. And Christmas, I love Christmas so much. I love Christmas for everything that it represents. Giving, loving, food, family, everything about Christmas I love. Jesus Christ, love. But I was all over the place just now about grace. But. The album is going to be about grace. God's grace to me. God's grace through Jesus Christ to me. God's grace in my life and my family and just like with my health, mental health, emotional health, physical health, physical health, spiritual health. You know, I owe it all to God. Financial health, I owe it all to God. By his grace, I am able to live and move and have my being with by God's grace and so look out for that December the 1st I'm going to have at least one song out by December the 1st but the full album will be done by Christmas Day um okay wow that was a long meditation but it just so many things just kept coming inside my in my heart because it really just boils down to God's love. God's love. And like to have God's love is to have everything. 
We all have it. No one can say that they're not loved by God. You could say people don't love you. You could say your mother doesn't love you. You could say your father doesn't love you. You could say your sister don't love you. You could say your daddy, your um, cousins don't love you. You could say your uncles don't love you. You could say your aunties don't love you. You could say your friends don't love you. You could say the world don't love you. You could even say you don't love yourself. But hey, we are, we know the devil don't love us. huh? You could say your husband don't love you. You could say your wife don't love you. You could say your children don't love you. You could say everybody doesn't love you, but you cannot say God don't love you. So why don't you just like trust him? You may not know how to love God, but you could trust him. You know? But Sometimes we have to buck up, like me. Sometimes we have to buck up and then God prove his love to us personally, which God did to me. Personally, and he say, you know what? You do something stupid, that was not smart. And I told you not to do that. But I love you. And I can fix this for you. And listen, I, I remember God did something for me. I didn't even ask God to fix it, but he did. It needed to be fixed. I had to go to God and I was like, oh God, sorry for that, for true. But I didn't, even, I didn't even think to ask God to fix it. I thought it was done. You know? I didn't even ask God to say, God, fix this for me. I didn't even know grace was available for me to ask God to fix this situation for me. It was, it was unfixable, if that's a word. But God made it a point to fix it for me. Because of love. And God, what God fix me, God fix for you. Because he's not a, he's not a, um, you see like Jacob, you are Joseph. Everybody is Joseph. I'm not Joseph alone. God in, okay, we're not in the time of favoritism. God don't show no favorites no more. Like he did with the Jews. Like Jacob did with Joseph. We're not in that time anymore. Whatever God do for me, God will do for you. He will. He wants to. That's why, that's why Jesus came. So it will be available to all of us. And it is available to all of us. Whether we accept it or whether we ask for it, whether we believe it or not, it's there. It's available to us. We just have to reach out and touch it. Go to God and repent. And repentance isn't sorry. Repentance is, wow. Um, I think I'm going in the wrong direction. Let me let me go this way. Let me go back. Let me go this way. I was going right now. I think I need to go left. I need to go left because this this ain't the right way. And God ain't gonna fix it for you when you. God isn't gonna fix it for you when you. Um, start walking left, even though you was going to the right. God gonna fix it for you when you make the turn and when you, in your mind, you decide in your heart, this the wrong way. That's what it was for me. And I, like I say, I didn't even ask God to fix it. He wanted to fix it for me. You know? And I'll be honest with you. I think that God still would have fixed it even if I didn't turn on the right direction. If I had said, God, fix this for me, I believe he would have fixed it. Why not? He's, a, he's already paid the ultimate price to fix it. Why wouldn't he fix it? He did everything already. It's, it's already done. You know, I, I feel like sometimes we, we stop ourselves from receiving from God because he's so good. And we, we feel like, I feel like religion is our way of saying, of saying we're worthy. 
of, of this good God, of this good, of all these good things that God have for us, the, all the good things that God wants to give to us. It's our way of saying, okay, well, I've done this, I've done this, I've done that, so now I am worthy. We, we weren't worthy of Christ dying for us. We weren't worthy of him giving his life for us. He was perfect. He was amazing. He didn't have to do that. He didn't have to come and die for me and my daughter. You know, not just for me, for my daughter, for any other children that I have. Jesus already did everything that's necessary for me in this life and in the next, for me and my children, for the world, past, present, and future. And I, I really do believe that religion is something that keeps us from looking at God for who he really is. He is just good. And humans are not. Humans are not. And, and deep down, we all know we're not good. So why would God be so good to me when I know deep down I'm not good? So if I follow these rules and I follow these regulations, then maybe I could feel like I'm worthy of this little bit of good thing that I have that God has given to me. Maybe I'll feel worthy of this love. Maybe I'll feel worthy of a home. Maybe I'll feel worthy to be happy, to be loved by a man for you ladies. To you fellas, to, to have this great job and this great life. You know? To have the life that I've dreamed of having. Even though I've done so many crazy things. Why? Because I'm not good. No one is good. The goodest the person isn't good. And we know this. It's surprising when we when we do do something that's good. Wow, I'm going on a rant right now. It's 22 minutes right now. Oh goodness. You know? But I, I just feel like growing up, I just used to hear all the time, be good, be good. I didn't know how to be good. I still don't know how to be good. But I can do good. I can I can know what is right from wrong. You're right, but that's not the same as good. You do good. Do good to people. Do good to yourself. That's easy. Stop telling people to be good. It goes against our nature. Don't tell your children to be good. It's heavy. That's heavy. It's impossible. You know, it's impossible. Only God is good. We can do good, and then we you have to be born, born. You have to be born again. You have to, um, you have to be born again to Christ. Christ enables you to do good things. But in life is not about being good and always doing the right thing. Life is about humility. Life is about wisdom. You know, trying your best. Don't go to these places you shouldn't be going. Trying your best. Don't do the type of things you know you shouldn't be doing. You know, pay your bills. Try not to get into too much debt. Eat, eat healthy. Take care of yourself. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Have more than one form of income. These are wisdom principles, you know. Don't start building something if you don't know, if you don't have everything you need to finish it. talking a lot today but it's just 
this new year think about what good you could do